get comfortable, yes. Welcome back. You look very well today. Good. I'm very happy to see you. Please settle in and get comfortable, okay? We went over the um, parts of your history that resembled your um, psychology. We talked a lot about family. Now we're going to talk more about the relationships of the more romantic type, okay? And this can be very healing and therapy. So I want you to be very open and comfortable. But if there's anything you don't want to answer, please can tell me, okay? We can address that at another date, okay? Okay. So let me begin by explaining a little bit about this step, and then I will ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. Our first experience of loving and being loved occurred when we were children. A parent's love might at times be deeply tender and enchanting, but it can easily involve tricky dynamics as well. Perhaps we have learned to love a depressed parent or a very irritable one. Perhaps we came to associate love with trying very hard to please or constant fear of abandonment. Okay. We might have been exposed to favoritism and learned to see love as something we could only get if another person did not. A parent might have conveyed the impression that they could only love us if we were very good or if we remained docile and dependent, suggesting the deep independent success of our own would signal the end of their love for us. So as you can see, the last session we had talking about family is also going to play a part in our romantic relationships. Okay. So, before we get into the more romantic feelings, we're going to address family very briefly. So, what might have been less than ideal in your childhood experience of love? make you feel mm -hmm. the themes you have identified in childhood, love, still be showing up in your adult experiences today. Can you think of any examples? going to talk about uh, now what unhealthy things feel attractive in a partner for you, okay? It's important to establish these boundaries. 
And when you know uh, and recognize the patterns for what they are, it's very easy to break it. So, yes, it can be something unhealthy, but for us it's attractive. But it's okay because uh, these are all a reflection of when you were maybe little. It has a lot to do with uh, your childhood. So, because when we love as adults, uh, this mirrors the emotions we felt in love as children. We may found us ourselves powerfully drawn to partners, uh, not just for their positive qualities, but also more darkly for their capacity to make us suffer in ways that feel familiar. For example, maybe you are... Uh, attracted to someone who is like hard to get because you want to work for the affection so only one example so for example we can ask you now what a tricky character trait do you find yourself being drawn to okay mm-hmm familiar to a parental figure in your life? Did one of your parents or someone important to you display this kind of... Uh... Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. And how did they display this? Mm. Mm-hmm. attachment. So psychologists love to divide us into these categories of avoidant and anxious kind of lovers. An avoidant pattern of relating to lovers means that when there is difficulty we grow cold and distant and deny our need for anyone. We desperately want to feel reassured but we feel so anxious that we may be unwanted that we disguise our needs behind the facade of indifference. At the precise moment when we want to be close, we say we're busy, we pretend our thoughts are somewhere else, we get sarcastic, dry, etc. We might even have an affair, this kind of cheating, this kind of thing. For its part, anxious attachment is a pattern of relating to lovers whereby when there is difficulty, we grow a, a procedural controlling over small matters, domestic routines. We feel our partners are escaping us emotionally, but rather than admitting our sense of loss, we respond by trying to pin them down. So, um, this is a rough um, thing, but based on the little you know, would you say you're more anxious or avoidant in your love? Do you uh, try to play the hard to get or do you really fight for the, the safety, the comfort? Describe uh, an event uh, that uh, displayed this type of attachment style. An example, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. And how do you think this was acquired by you? How do you think that this trait came to be? Is it based on an experience or... Okay. Mm. Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Let's give you a scenario. Imagine a friend who knows you well explaining to someone else how you might be a difficult person to live with day by day. What things might they say about you? Yes, from their perspective. Mm. 
Now think of a romantic partner. What criticisms of you might these past lovers make? we must be understood how would you ideally want your partner to properly understand you if you could give them one thing to understand about you what would it that be something that is very important Would you say is the bigger story behind your intense reaction to these little things? Yes, you can use that as an example, of course. Yes? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. significant things does your partner have the tendency to not understand about you something more deeply significant something very okay mm -hmm. impossible that we never do anything that upsets our partner 
So sometimes they can uh, misread us, but it's not necessarily their fault. Um, so we often don't apologize because it feels too dangerous to admit the guilt that we actually feel, that we'll have to break down too much, uh, uh, that we still care about. It can feel too one-sided. And so our partner thinks we don't notice or don't care about the pain and distress we've caused them when we don't apologize. So for your example, what ideally would you like to apologize about to your partner? Would you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. What would you worry about would happen if you did apologize for this? At first, yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. So you would say it's like almost like a hidden thing. So what do you hide from your partner? Yes. Mm-hmm. your assumptions it's natural yes of course okay so sometimes wanting to change uh, a partner is uh, can be very dangerous but uh, it's normal that we have this kind of feeling as you've expressed what would you like to change in your partner it could be your current or your ideal partner yes mm-hmm If they don't have this trait, you want to change. And uh, what could make this change feel attractive to you and not like a burdensome demand? Mm. also how the help is being offered. Here are a few main options, okay? I'm going to give you like five and if you could pick one you tell me. 
What would you like uh, from the partner when we have a problem? One, being listened to. Two, being offered a solution. Three, hearing an optimistic prognosis. Outcome. Four, hearing a pessimistic prognosis. Or five, being offered cuddles or physical affection. What would you say would you prefer? Ah, okay. Uh, which one do you really not like out of the five? So, being listened to, being offered a solution, optimistic, pessimistic, or affection. What don't you really like when you're having a problem? Hmm. And do you think this goes back to your childhood when you ever felt guilty for something or ashamed? Okay. And when you say the one that you prefer, would you say that was offered to you as a child or was it not? Mm. And the one that you really don't like, would you say that you had that as a child or you did not? Mm. Relationships are very complicated, but the next time we are together, we will talk about sex. In the relationship, it's very important. This was a more the reflection moving past from family, friendship, this kind of relation. Next, we will talk a little bit about sex and this kind of uh, influence in our lives. It's very important to cover a lot of the bases. Uh, in this therapy, figuring out uh, who you are, we're going to talk about psychology, relationships, sex, other people, work, uh, uh, culture, this kind of uh, things. So we have a lot to talk about in our therapy session, but of course the time is up. 20 minutes uh, goes by very quickly, but of course, uh, if you want to see me more often, you must simply make an appointment. Okay, but uh, I'm very happy to have you here in my clinic uh, once more. You are a very kind patient. You are very sweet, you are very open, and you are a very good person, okay? It's important to remember that you are a good person. You must always be strong, but you can never let life make you hard. You must be soft. Yes, it's very, in my opinion, the most important thing to be in life. Strong, but soft. Most people struggle to find the balance in life, but help you to find a lot of balance, comfort, these kind of things in your life that you need, okay? Okay, so as usual, I'm going to exit this room, give you some time to yourself, you can have five minutes in the room to reflect, to be comfortable, to relax, you have some time for yourself, okay? I want you to be safe and happy, I don't want you to leave the room in a shock. So I prefer to leave the room myself, okay? Please help yourself to some candy, some water, these kind of things. You can make yourself a tea or a coffee and simply relax, okay? You have five minutes to yourself and then you can exit, okay? Quietly, of course. No one will bother you. Okay, well, it's very good to see you here, of course. And when I saw you, I really mean it. You look very well. going to be getting my stuff and leaving. Okay, ciao.